What if I told you that you could create a grow tent for just $2 and a few other items from around your house? Would you believe me? What if that grow tent could dramatically increase your lights efficiency? Sound too good to be true? Well, why don't you stick around and I'll show you how it's done. Firstly, if you've come to this video thinking we're going to make something like this, you're wrong. Grow tents like this can cost you upwards of $200 and aren't really an option for a lot of us. Fortunately, Cody over at uh, newkeds.com, he's on uh, Facebook and YouTube as well, showed a way to make a grow tent with some really promising results that I want to share with you. For this build, there's only two components that you need, and both of these you can get at your local dollar store. First thing is you're going to need some mylar. This is space age stuff developed by NASA, highly reflective and lightweight, and you can pick it up for a dollar in the camping section. Next, head over to the kids aisle and we're going to find a hula hoop. Try to find a hula hoop that's going to be big enough to fit around your light because this is what we're going to use to hang the mylar off of that's going to surround your light and help make your light that much more efficient. So that's it. Those are the only two items we're going to need. The rest of the items we can get from our home. But before we get started, we're going to want to test out our light without a grow tent. And to do that, I'm going to use a PAR meter. Now, a PAR meter is used to measure a various wavelengths of light between a specific range. The range that this PAR meter will measure is between the 400 to 700 nanometer range. Now, for the sake of this video, we're just going to say that a higher rating or higher PAR means more available light to the plant than a lower rating. So let's get started on getting some measurements. So this is the light we're going to be using for our test. It's an HLG 65 by Horticulture Lighting Group and we're going to do measurements from 12 inches, 18 inches and 24 inches away. And then we're going to put the tent on and see how different the light is or how much more light there is with a grow tent. So let's get started. The rig I'm using is built into the slat wall and I can't get exactly 12 inches, but I'll get pretty close and that means the before and after tests will be the same height. So right now, we're probably just about 11 and a half inches for the first test and we're getting about 450 on the PAR meter. So we'll go ahead and move this up and we'll take our other two measurements. And then we move it further back to around 18. And there's our reading there. And finally, we move to the 24 inch interval and uh, we get our reading there. As expected, the further away we move our light, the less effective it becomes. So now we get to find out if our big $2 investment is going to help us out. If you haven't figured it out already, the hula hoop is going to go around the grow light and then we're gonna hang the mylar off the hoop. So let's get figure out a way to hang this hoop around our light and then we'll get the mylar around the hula hoop. So once you've figured out a way to hang your hoop, either with string or rope or cables, whatever you got, uh, you might have something that looks like this. And then from here, we're gonna just tape the mylar on around the light. We just attach the mylar to the hoop now. A bit of tape, that's all that's needed for this process. Just work your way around attaching the mylar to the hoop. If you have a bigger hoop or maybe you've built yourself a rectangle shape out of PVC fittings, you might need another blanket depending on how big of a grow light you're trying to cover. Okay, so the next step here is, well, I think, I think that's actually it for steps. You get the hoop and you put the mylar around it and you put it around your light. It's, it's just really that easy. But as they say, the proof is in the pudding. Or in our case, the proof is in the quantum par meter micromole digital readout. We'll just take some readings now. Let's take a look at our readings and compare. At uh, 12 inches without the mylar, we were getting a reading of 451 par. And with the mylar, we were getting a reading of 620. That's a 37% increase. That's uh, pretty good. At 18 inches, we were seeing without around 230. And with 405, that's a 76% increase. And at 24 inches, we were reading 134 without. And with, we were reading 298? 
122% increase. Something is wrong here. Something's wrong. I'm going to set this up and uh, do it again. Let's, let's try this again here. Let's take a look. I have it set up here at the 24 inch mark and I'm getting a reading of 304. So I'm going to try not to move anything and just take the hoop off and see what our reading is. But take a look, it's 304. Okay, so let's take this hoop off and then see what we get. Okay, I'll plug the light back in and see what we're reading. Oop. Let's do that first. One thirty five, take a look. One forty, okay. That is a ridiculous increase. So 122% increase, I'm sure maybe there's somebody out there that can tell me why, why this works so well or what I'm doing wrong because that seems like a lot. Like how could you not afford 122% increase for $2? Seems odd. Seems like a really good deal. Seems like a great deal. And I wanna thank Cody over at newkeds.com for sharing this idea and inspiring this project. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.